again, I'll uh, I'll say, hey guys, I'm just trying something different here, doing something on uh, like I'm recording for for my YouTube channel, but I'm also live here on Facebook. I hope you guys can hear me. Okay, audio's great. Thanks, Daisy. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, apparently the audio wasn't being picked up over here on on uh, the YouTube recording. So, like I said, just playing around. Uh, what I wanted to get into today was was a couple different things. And what you guys will see from yesterday, I actually recorded an episode and I put it up on, on YouTube. And I was blown away. What I was discussing yesterday with the post I made yesterday was that I had been married four times. Um, I think in the discussion, I, I literally, I think I poked fun at myself uh, quite a bit. Uh, but the reality is I've actually been married four separate times. Um, and apparently, apparently that upset uh, some of the discussion. Maybe that, I think that might have ruined some people's uh, stories they had told other people. And they kind of got upset about it. So I decided to take it down. But uh, it kind of sucks because quite honestly, I think that part of the draw of a lot of the stuff that I do is the fact that I am talking about my life and I'm being very honest about the things I've been through, the things I've done. And I think that resonates with a lot of people. So it, it amazed me that when I posted that video, it actually, within an hour, it had received about four times the amount of views as any other video I've ever put up. Um, and had it stayed at that rate, it probably would have had several thousand views by today. Um, as I've talked about, you know, doing this stuff on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, it's for me, it's, it's, it's kind of therapeutic. It's getting a lot of stuff out there, just kind of talking and, and, and really and enjoying myself. But there is, you know, for these different platforms, they have different rules and regulations and guidelines and things like that. So I, I, it, it, you have to build up viewership, you have to build up uh, followers, you have to build up uh, time spent listening. Um, in the radio business, they call it TSL, time spent listening. Well, on, on both Facebook and YouTube, you actually have to build up hours of watch time. So you've got to go make sure that uh, you do enough stuff for Facebook and Instagram so that their algorithms pick you up. And then you have to do enough stuff for YouTube so their algorithms pick you up. So it goes back and forth. And it's, you know, I try to balance that out. And that particular video was just me talking about my life. And it apparently it resonated with a lot of people and it caught a lot of attention. Um, but I took it down. Um, and I actually talked about that last night. I did a live on my on the, the, the Manage Chaos Facebook page last night. And I didn't go into detail as to why I took it down, uh, but I did explain that I did take it down. And, and it sucks because uh, that's the back end of it because I am, this is kind of like an art. Look, this is not my job. This is not what I do for a living. Uh, but this in a way is, is, is an art. It's it's, it's a form of entertainment and some people get something out of it. Sometimes it helps a lot of people. I actually got a message. I got a text message about 30 minutes ago from a very old friend of mine, a guy I've known for my entire life. A guy actually dated my cousin, um, for a long time. Um, and I, I, I've, I've always looked at him kind of like a brother, um, kind of figure in my life. And he actually messaged me just out of the clear blue, text me out of the clear blue and told me that he really enjoys my shows. He really enjoys the, everything that I'm doing, the stuff I talk about, and he cannot wait for me to actually have the podcast come out. And, you know, just, just getting one of those a day makes me feel good. Not because it, I get to, you know, like I feel important or anything like that, but it, it makes me feel good that people get joy out of the things that I'm doing and saying. And it, and it, and it is quite, um, it is quite fulfilling in, in that way um, because uh, quite honestly, I think for me, I, I have a little bit like I have guilt. It's, it's almost like survivor's remorse where um, I feel like I need to give back. I feel like I have a whole lot that I need to give back that I've lived such an amazing life and I've done, you know, I've done amazing, great things and I've done bad things in my life and I've suffered and paid for those things. But now I feel like I get to give back in a lot of ways. And so to get that from one person is, is fantastic. Um, 
but I get it from multiple people every single day. I get messages on multiple platforms between Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. People message me and tell me that what I'm doing, they appreciate. Uh, whether they just enjoy the entertainment factor of what I'm doing or that, you know, what I said helped them. Uh, because I've been through a lot. I mean, God, look look at my life like I've talked about. I mean, I was born into a life of privilege. Uh, had an amazing family. I was, I was gifted that from the very beginning. Um, if you look at our society today, they would say that just the color of my skin was a blessing. And, and I'm not sorry for that. I don't, I don't, I, I'm not, I'm not going to feel sorry for any of those things. Cause that was just what I was given, but I certainly see the, and I'm sympathetic to people on, on the, on the other side of things. So I get it, but then I've also been on the other side of stuff. I've been in very bad places. I've been in I've been in prison and I've been around uh, people that grew up in, in hardships and they been went through a whole lot of really nasty stuff in their life and they were struggling to get places and I was able to sit there and talk with them and really learn about them and, and, and go through that process with them and then at some point I was actually able to help them a little bit. That gave me a lot of joy and and so that's kind of what's carried on and, and what's, what's brought this out. I actually deal with a lot of those guys on a regular basis where we talk and we have conversations just about their life, what they're going through, their families, they're having children, their home, they're you know trying to do things. They're, they ask questions of me about where I'm at in life and how they can do this, how they can do that. I have a buddy of mine um, who I've known, uh, God, since 2011, 2012. He texts me from time to time asking me for, you know, stock advice, things about the stock market. He doesn't understand, you know, you know, different different avenues of you know Roth IRAs and 401ks and you know he asked he was asking me the stuff about the AMC and and different stuff and I I genuinely do it because I enjoy it because I like to give back and that's I guess that part of that guilt that remorse that I have that I've lived this great life I don't feel bad for it but I do believe that part of me has to give back and I enjoy that I really enjoy that and so when someone when somebody people that that for for purely selfish reasons of their own they want to try to destroy that and try to take it down they're only thinking about themselves they're not thinking about what it does for everybody else and the other side of that kind of pisses me off because this is my art form this is stuff that I do and I put it out there to the world and I'm honest and I'm genuine and I'm rare and I'm raw and I just and I talk about stuff that guys just generally don't talk about and it it feels good to do that so it bothers me when people want to be so selfish. They only think about themselves. They don't think about the long, what, how that could help other people, how people, other people could benefit from that. It's, it's really upsetting to me. And so I got really worked up about the whole situation. And so I went live, and you guys can check out that live on the uh, Facebook, the Manage Chaos uh, Facebook page. Uh, hopefully you guys check that out. It's a recording. It's up there. It's actually on my YouTube channel. It's on, and it's on the, the, the Facebook page as well. And, and I go into detail and, and the reality is that I, I approach life with the thought process that I'm, I'm always going to win. I never, I will tell you this is, um, you know, I had a lot of conflict with my coach growing up and there was just a lot of different things that went on. And I, uh, and, and I have to kind of adjust this. I don't know the screen kind of going back and forth. Like I said, I'm actually doing, I'm trying something different here. I don't know if the screen will, will, will mess up and I'm going to have to check it on time to time, but I'm actually doing the YouTube. I'm recording my YouTube and I'm live on Instagram. So I'm just playing with stuff. So I might have to check the screen every once in a while because it kind of goes dim. I don't know if that means it's going to stop recording or cut off or whatever. But anyway, you know, my coach and I growing up, we had a lot of conflict, but the man, the man taught me so much. And one thing that he always talked about is it's kind of funny because you, you know, you see it in, in uh, Talladega Nights and they talk about like, if you're not first, you're last, uh, those kinds of mentality. Well, growing up when we were racing and, and, and competing, there was the mentality that, that you train to win. You never go out there with the mentality that you're going to be second, that someone else is going to beat you. You go out there with the mentality that you're going to win. And that's how I approach everything in life. I never go into anything with only half effort because when you do that, you automatically set yourself up for failure. You have to approach everything in life as if you're going to give it your best, you're going to do it, you know, do it the, to the best of your ability and you're going to you're going to win. And I never do anything where I think I'm going to be second. I always believe that I'm going to win. Uh, so 
I try to do my best about everything. And a lot of times that means me being uh, uh, raw. It means, it means that I have to just put myself out there and be vulnerable and, and try different things and, and suffer the consequences, the risk of that. Uh, because Hey, people will tell me that they think what I'm doing is shit. And some people will tell me they think what I'm doing is great. And that's just part of this, you know, not nobody ever gets to the top by saying, staying safe. You have to take risks. You have to take a chance. And what I've always done in my life is, you know, my father used to tell me, my father was a really, really big risk taker and he was very successful because of that, um, high risk, high reward. And he used to tell me, he used to say, he used to say, I wake up every morning and I grab my balls and I, and I, and I like, like the dice and I roll them. And he says, I just hold on to my nuts and I go with it every single day. And that's kind of the mentality that I take with stuff is that you have that high risk, you have that high reward. You have to take chances in life for those things. Um, and, and so many things, you have to take a chance to go to your job and, 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 and accomplish things. And, you know, you have to, you know, if you want to be in a relationship with somebody, you have to take chances with them. You got to put yourself out there and make an effort and try. And that stuff can get kind of scary. But it's risk and there's a reward there and you never do it with the thought process of failure. So me doing this, doing these things out here, it's for me in a lot of ways because it is therapeutic, but it does help other people and it is risky. There is a risk that I'm going to I'm gonna piss people off and they're not going to be happy with me and they're going to say nasty things to me or be upset, whatever, but I'm trying. I, I'm trying and and I think that it, bo it bothers me to my core that that when there are people out there that haven't ever really made that risk, they've never really put themselves out there and they want to judge you and they want to, they want to criticize you and when they, and, and it's, it's bothersome. So, you know, I, I actually was listening to, uh, you know, one thing I listened to on Joe Rogan is he talks about, he never reads the comments. He never dives into the things that people say, cause it's like a black hole and, you know, it just drags you down and you get involved with that kind of stuff and it's just not worth it. Well, you know, I, I've tried to take the mentality and the approach with a lot of stuff here that I'm going to be engaging with a lot of people. I'm going to try a lot of different stuff and I'm going to ask for input and I'm going to respond and I'm going to, going to reply to all these things. And sometimes it doesn't turn out so well. And I, and I accept that that's part of it. But when somebody wants to literally just shit on what I'm doing and it's about my life as if I don't have a right to talk about my own life you know, hey, I'm sorry that there's other people involved in these stories, but I'm not making anything up. It may not be pleasant for people. It may not be exactly what they want to hear, but this is the truth. Well, at least it's my truth. And everybody else has the ability to speak their own truth, but this is my truth, and this is, this is me. And it sucks when someone wants to shit on that. It really, really does suck. So anyway, that's why I took the video down yesterday. Uh, it had... Uh, like I said, in an hour of being up, it had it had more views than any other video that I've put up there. And maybe the title of it, the fact that I've been married four times and I have uh, three children from three separate women, um, you know, has, uh, you know, has there's a lot of things that people don't know about me. So that's that's something that 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 I put out there. And I think that 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 brought a lot of people in. Maybe that was the reason. I don't know. Maybe the algorithm picked up on. It. I have no idea. But the fact it was there and in some way that's kind of pleasing and it sucks that I, that I had to take it down. So anyway, um, if you guys want to, you know, like I said, I'm not going to go into all the details. I will not go into all the details of, of it. Um, you guys can see the, the, the live I did yesterday on the, uh, Facebook page, uh, manage chaos, Jason Husk, manage chaos, Facebook page. So anyway, I am live here on Instagram. Um, I can see, uh, you know, some of the comments. I can see people coming in and out, joining and things like that. So I appreciate you guys doing that. Um, I will end up posting this video on YouTube as well. So like I said, just trying different things. But uh, kind of I wanted to talk about was kind of funny was, you know, I had that that I dealt with yesterday. But, um, you know, where I live, I live kind of out in the suburbs. And it's, 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 it's more or less country, but it's, it's suburbs. And... Um, you know, I'm busy. I'm coming and going all the time. Uh, you know, I do this for 45 minutes to an hour a day and, but I'm, I work, I mean, I'm doing my regular job. So I'm coming in and I'm, I'm coming and going. And 
and I have multiple vehicles and I use those vehicles from, and I mean, I mean, physical vehicles. Um, and I use those different vehicles for different purposes. Um, long distance, short distance. If I have to carry something heavy or if I'm just going to the gym, whatever I do that. Well, um, you know, I've got, I've got a driveway and I don't have like three car lane driveway. I mean, I've got enough driveway to park all my vehicles. And then of course my garage, but from time to time, what I do is I park one of those vehicles in the road in right in front of my house. Um, and what I do is when I park this vehicle, I'm very clear about where I park it. Um, it's in front of my house. I don't block some, anybody's driveway. I'm not blocking anybody's mailbox. I'm not blocking a fire lane. I'm not anywhere near a fire hydrant. Well, I'm, I'm on a community Facebook page for our neighborhood and I get a text from my neighbor this morning, um, right next door. Great guy, by the way, guy, uh, Chris, um, he doesn't mind me mentioning his name on here, but, um, I get a text from him this morning and I hadn't paid attention to it. I hadn't even opened up Facebook this morning by the time he texts me. And apparently I, I pissed off somebody in this neighborhood. Um, somebody who doesn't even live on my street, uh, so they posted on the Facebook page that they were pissed off about my black SUV parked in the road. And it was, they said it was parked there for three days and, you know, it creates a fire or not a fire uh, hazard, but like a safety issue, um, because buses come down my road and, you know, school buses, things like that. Um, which is kind of funny cause buses don't like normally drive past my house where my vehicle is. They normally, the way they do their loop is they actually go the other way around. So they're always on the other side of the road. Um, but apparently my vehicle being there pisses some people off because they have to go around it, which I think is just fucking ridiculous to have to complain about. But anyway, they posted this thing and they also commented on my black flag, the black flag I have hanging outside my house. I have a black American flag that hangs outside of my house and I have a regular American flag. Now, the black flag um, that some of you guys don't know that I hang out there, um, it stands for the exact opposite thing that a white flag stands for. When you see people in videos or movies, whatever, waving a white flag, what they're doing is saying, you know, I surrender or, you know, whatever, or, you know, don't shoot, whatever. The black flag has traditionally been used uh, for decades, for for centuries, um, uh, for multiple purposes, but also but in military purposes for to say, I will not accept your surrender, nor will I offer any quarter. And what that means is that somebody will die on the battlefield. That either it will be you or me. It will be a fight to the death. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give a ground, I'm not going to give an inch of ground, and I'm not going to allow you to surrender either. Again, that's my winner's mentality that kind of kicks in there, but the black flag that I hang up there, it, it serves a dual purpose in today's society, saying that I'm not going to back down, I'm not going to walk away from the things I believe in, and I'm going to stay strong to them. Sorry, again, got to click the screen, I don't know if it's going to go off here, so I'm going to click it every once in a while. Um... So I hang this black flag out there, and it, uh, several months ago, I was getting complaints from my HOA, and they didn't know that it was an American flag. They were just taking pictures from like three houses down, showing I had a black flag out there, which apparently doesn't meet the HOA standard. And so they would take a picture, and they would send me a letter saying that they were going to start fining me, that starting April 1st, they were going to start fining me $15 a day for having this flag out there. Well, I ended up sending an email to the HOA, which I actually took and I copied and pasted on top of the community page. So everybody was kind of aware of this because this is what happens in our society. Our society, they get a letter like that and they buckle, they fold and they say, I'm going to give up. I'm going to walk away and I'm, I'm going to just surrender all of my rights. You know, their HOA says something to me. Okay. Oh, I got to stop doing what the fuck the HOA says. Well, in reality, the black flag is an American flag. It's not, I, I, I can alter the colors of the American flag. I don't have to fly a red, white, and blue. I can actually fly a solid black flag. It is constitutionally protected under the First Amendment of, of free speech. And free speech is also covered, it covers offensive speech and it covers unpopular speech. And so you'd meet, what that means is I can say, fuck you, 
And you don't have to like it, and it's offensive speech, but it's covered. I can wear a shirt that says, fuck you. I have a hat that says, fuck off. I'm allowed to wear that. I can wear that anywhere, and no one can stop me. It's protected speech, freedom of speech. Well, the black flag is the same thing. It's protected under the Constitution of the United States of America. But also here in Texas, there is a law that states that any American flag cannot be restricted no matter when or where or how you fly it. You just have to fly it a, you have to fly it, you know, respectfully, like, you know, up, you know, you can't have it on the ground, stuff like that. If you hang it vertically, it has to hang with the, the stars. Um, if, if you're looking at it, the stars have to be on the top left corner hanging down. Well, the state of Texas actually has the law that says an HOA cannot, does not have the right to restrict how, when, and where I fly an American flag. They can't. They have no right. I can I can fly it year-round. I don't have to wait for holidays, and I don't wait for holidays. There's so many people in this neighborhood that they, they put up an American flag only on holidays. It's like, it's like religious people that only go to service on holidays because it makes them feel good. Well, I'm going to hang an American flag year-round. I actually have a brand new one I need to hang because the one I've got up there is, is, is kind of being torn apart. It's been up there for almost a year now, so it needs to be replaced. Um, and I'll actually take the American flag down and I'm not going to throw it away. I'm going to take it to the post office and there's a box there where you can donate old American flags. I don't know if a lot of people know this. They have them in a lot of post offices. They also have them in like, um, community centers, voting centers, things like that. And you can actually take an American flag and donate it. And the boy scouts in the area will take the American flag, they'll refurbish it, and they'll donate it out. They'll donate the American flag to people, to locations, things like that. So you guys, don't ever throw away an American flag. Take your flag. You can take it down and donate it. And the Boy Scouts will take it, and, and they'll, they'll fix it. They'll sew it, and that's part of one of the things that they do. So anyway... This lady makes this post, and my my neighbor sends me a screenshot of it. She takes a screenshot of the post, and he says, someone woke up and chose violence. So I thought that was pretty fucking funny. So I went on the post, and I saw it. I looked at it, and I saw, and and all I did was I laughed at it. I clicked the laugh, the laughed uh, response, reaction to it. Well, apparently the author of it didn't take too kindly to my laughing at it. She immediately responds to me, and asked why I'm laughing at this because apparently I'm supposed to uh, like uh, like she's assuming that I that I think public safety is 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 funny and she follows up to call me arrogant and then proceeds to say but it's expected now I went on I looked at the individual I found out who she was she doesn't live on my street I don't know exactly where she lives, but I was able to see part of her Facebook page. And clearly what what, uh, bothered her about everything was uh, that you see my yard, because she mentioned the black flag, but she sees my yard. She sees all my Trump stuff still up. I still have a Trump sign on my front door. I've got a Trump bird feeder in my yard or in one of the trees. I've got a, an antique truck that sits in my uh, one of my flower beds that says Trump 2020. And I've got a little sign in the other flower bed, uh, a stick sign that says Trump 2020 on it. So clearly she was now trying to attack my political views. So I simply responded to her to say that what she was saying was completely false. That in fact I have used the truck just yesterday. It hadn't been parked there unmoved for three days. And that she should go ahead and explain to the community her prejudice against me Um, because she was already making the assumption of I'm arrogant and that it's to be expected. So that apparently pissed her off. That made her so mad that I called her prejudiced. And it just, it clearly indicated to me her ignorance of not only the word, but the entire scenario here. Because she immediately responds with, how can I be prejudiced? I'm married to a white man. Well, that should tell you enough right there. What I said had nothing to do with the color of her skin, only the ignorance of her towards me. She made a statement about who she believed I was, an arrogant person that's to be expected without ever having any 
personal interaction with me whatsoever. That's the definition of prejudice, to judge somebody solely based on their appearance. What she was confusing was racism. I didn't call her racist. Racism is hating somebody strictly based on the color of their skin. Prejudice is making a judgment or disliking somebody without having any personal interaction with them whatsoever, judging somebody, and you don't even know who they are, what they stand for, and the kind of person they are, the character of who they are. Well, that pissed her off. Of course, she immediately responds with, well, how can I be prejudiced? You should use a better word. I'm married to a white man. And again, you know, I, I, I responded to her simply saying, well, like the HOA rules that you clearly haven't read and are ignorant to, you should read the definition of prejudice because you're clearly making a statement about who you believe I am without ever knowing me. What was really funny, what, you know, what ended up happening with this was there was like 27 comments and other people were joining in in the community. And what they were all saying was, hey, if you know who this person is, why not go talk to him? And I knew that from the very beginning because what she was looking for was a safe space. She figured this environment where she could post this on a public community, on a community broadcast, she figured that there would be people that would come to her side. See, I think about this just like the way people do about the vaccine. See, there are people out there that want to be a part of something. So they'll go out there and they'll say something and they, say, and they look for a safe space and they figure that it's okay for people that they can attack somebody about the vaccine, whether they want the vaccine or don't want the vaccine. They do that because they believe that other people will come to their aid, believe in their side, believe in their opinion, and then will we'll support them. They feel, they feel as if they're a part of a group now. Well, this lady tried that. And what happened, it backfired on her. Other people started coming on there and simply saying, hey, this is, you could have talked to the guy personally about this. This is not something you had to broadcast out there to the entire community. And what she ended up doing, she ended up doing was attacking all of these other people. She ended up attacking these other people by literally saying to them, don't comment on here unless you agree with me. I'm talking to Jason directly. I'm only talking to Jason. She did not want to hear from anybody who disagreed with her. She started attacking these other people because they didn't agree with her. Her safe space was crumbling. It was falling apart, and she didn't know how to respond. And so she responded like, like a wounded animal that was trying to fight for their lives. And, and, and nobody was attacking her. Nobody was coming after her saying, hey, uh, you know, you're wrong. You're wrong about this. They were simply saying, hey, you could have talked to Jason about this directly. And that pissed her off. And, and I, I went on to say that. I said, I said what I literally typed out what I, what I just said to you guys was that she was looking for a safe space. And it upset her when other people didn't come to her side. When other people didn't join in and side with her, she didn't know how to respond. And because I didn't respond like an asshole and I didn't call her names and I didn't attack her personally, I simply said, you should read the HOA bylaws. Because number one, in the HOA bylaws, it says that I'm not supposed to have a vehicle parked in my road for more than 24 hours at a time. Well, the fact that I drove the vehicle yesterday and she posted this message at like 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock in the morning meant that it had been out there for less than 24 hours. Well, that pissed her off when I pointed that out. On top of that, I put out there that it wasn't blocking anybody's driveway, so I wasn't violating anybody else's access to their driveway. I wasn't extended past my property line, so I wasn't hindering my neighbors whatsoever. I wasn't parked in front of their house in any way whatsoever. I wasn't blocking anybody's mailbox, so the, 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 mail, the mail carrier had no problem getting into buddy. I wasn't even blocking my own mailbox. I have a very long, the front of my house, I have a lot of room to park there. Then on top of that, what she was really complaining about is I live, I live one house down from a corner on a, on a street and cars come around this street. And when they come around that corner, if you're coming to, on the side of the road on my house, if, you, if you're coming this way, you have to wait for that car to come around this way so that you can pass the vehicle that I had parked in the road. Well, apparently that pissed her off. That's what pissed her off. It pissed
pissed her off. She had to drive around my vehicle that was parked in the road overnight, not for 24 hours, not for three days as she claimed, but because she had to drive around my fucking truck. And so she had a bitch to the entire community about this and then started attacking my flag and then started attacking my my beliefs and who I was as a, as a person and, and my political views when none of that was brought in. But what she was expecting, the kind of person she is, she was expecting me to be nasty. And this brings in back into the picture I say earlier is just don't be an asshole to people. We don't have to be assholes. You can state your opinion in a, in a, in a logical, crisp, concise way. And you don't have to be an asshole. You just have to speak logically. So when I told her that she should read the HOA bylaws, that sent her through the fucking roof. Because no longer was she now complaining because I clearly wasn't violating any of the rules and regulations within the guidelines. She now just wanted to, to that I should focus on the public safety, just like the vaccine. Apparently, I'm supposed, to pub, I'm supposed to focus and run my life based on what everybody else wants, the public safety. Well, my vehicle parked there, it's not been hit, even if it was. It's got 100% coverage. It's actually insured for more than what it's worth. So I welcome somebody slamming into it. Total it out. <laughs> the insurance company will pay more than what it's worth right now. I'm totally fine with that. That's a risk I take. But anyway, that, that really pissed her off. And so she went round and around and all these other people were just like, hey, look, you're making, you're being really nasty over something that's really not that big of a deal. And that backfired on her and she was even more pissed off about that. So that's why I tell everybody, you don't have to be an asshole to people. You can talk very clearly, very concisely to individuals and that alone will piss people off. That by itself is going to piss people off because if you're not being rude and nasty and calling people names and you're just speaking logically, that will send so many fucking people through the roof. And it's usually one kind of person. It's usually one type of person. Hey, I'm totally fine with being proved wrong, but you're going to have to prove me wrong and you're going to have to do it in a polite manner in the same manner I'm going to speak to you. I actually talked about that last night. I debate people all the time. I welcome it. And I have no problem with being educated. If you can sh show me something that educates me, that proves me wrong, or gives me a different point of view that I didn't know before, I'm, I'm open to that. And that's the funny part. I'm a conservative man, but I'm open to discussion in the possibility that I'm wrong. Isn't that what liberals are supposed to do? Aren't liberals supposed to be the ones that come back and they're supposed to be open to other people's opinion and listen to their opinion and, 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 and be okay with people being different. So apparently the only thing that's acceptable in today's society is believing exactly what someone else thinks. And I think that's, that's kind of crazy to me. That's crazy. It's crazy thinking. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, she, um, she, she definitely did not uh, apologize to me. She actually went even further to make statements about her age and she's 48 and she doesn't need to be educated by somebody like me. Well, I'm 40 years old. Oh my God, you're eight years older than me. Wow. You've, you're so great. And that's fine. Have your point of view, but that doesn't validate anything. That doesn't validate a single thing. That's, 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 these are last ditch efforts of people who have no real argument. They want to just resort to this other nonsense. And she wants to tell me that her husband is a business owner and he doesn't park his vehicle in the street. What the fuck's that got to do with me? It's my house. I pay taxes. I pay the mortgage. If I want to park my car in the street, I can park my car in the street. So what I ended up doing is my housekeepers uh, were here this morning. My housekeepers were, were here. And so they were, I know, first world problems. Um, they were parked on one side of my driveway. So what I did was... I actually took my F-350 and I pulled it out of the driveway and I parked it on the other side of the street. I took my SUV and I backed it up and I pulled it into my driveway. Now, my, my F-350 is a lot fucking bigger than my SUV. So I backed my Suburban into the driveway, parked it there, and then I took my truck and I parked it where the fucking Suburban was. I took a picture of it and I put it up on the community post and I said, hey, moved it. Because what she was bitching about was this big black SUV and my black sign. And it was just, or my black flag. And she was just, it was just, so, hey, you know what? If you're going to be an asshole, I'm not, I, 
I'm going to stay within my rights and I'm going to be polite about it, but doesn't mean I'm not going to be petty. And I got petty and I'm going to fucking keep my truck there. And I drove my truck today. I, you know, and there was no, tr- there was no vehicle parked in front of my house today, but it's fucking parked out there right now. My truck is certainly parked out in that fucking road right now. And if I choose to move it, I will. But I got 24 hours to, if I want to, I leave it there. Is what it is. So that, that I see that that really pisses people off. So, um, really cool. Um, kind of funny is, uh, yesterday I had to, I actually, I had to go do, I had to go to uh, a court for a registration ticket and I went there. Um, I got a ticket in my truck for the registration on it. Now my truck is, is, is owned by my company. Well, prior to my father's passing, my father uh, was the sole owner of the company. And I know this goes down kind of a rabbit hole here, but in order for us to renew the registrations on our vehicles, on all the company vehicles, on all 70 plus vehicles, trucks, and trailers that that uh, that the company owns, my father has to had to be the one that signed off on it. Well, he passed away in February. Well, my, ex- my, my uh, registration expired in January. Well, because he passed away in February, he was in the hospital, so he couldn't go get, he couldn't file for the new registration on my truck. He ha- had to have his signature on it, so he couldn't do it. So we had to wait till we got death certificates and we had to fill out other forms so that my mother could actually, on his behalf, sign and get the registration and inspection stickers. Um, well, we could just go do inspection and it stays on the same stick, uh, same thing. Um, we do inspections on the vehicles and then that gets tagged on digitally to our, our registration. And so when they, my mom had to go through a whole bunch of nonsense. Well, I ended up getting a ticket in, in my truck back in, um, in May and, um, we actually weren't able to get the registration done on my truck until the very end of June. Um, because of all that stuff. So I had to go into court yesterday and I really didn't have to go to court because I had the new registration. I had to stand in line at a cashier, whatever, show them the original sticker that you get in the mail that shows your registration, the original paper that it came on. And I took that in and, uh, they, they dismissed everything. They dismissed the case. Um, it cost me $10 for a processing fee. So they dismissed it and, and that was gone. Well, it was funny because today, uh, Fred, um, He actually had court for a ticket he got two years ago in 2019. He got a speeding ticket two years ago, and because of COVID and all the shutdowns and all this other stuff, it just kept getting pushed back, pushed back, pushed back, pushed back. So he finally went to court today. He walked in. He gets there. Court's at 1030. He walks in. They call everybody's name, and they say, it's like roll call and they say, okay, well, if we called your name, your case is dismissed. You're free to leave. So they dismissed his case. They called his name and, and he, he left. So he wasn't at work today. So when I got back, I had to go do an inspection on a, on a job up North. Um, and then, um, uh, went and had lunch today. And when I got back, I wrote an estimate and everything. And about, about three thirty four o'clock, Fred comes over to the house and we ended up sitting up here, uh, smoking hookah and another buddy of ours. Um, I talked to him on the phone. He was talking about maybe coming over and hanging out for a little while. And so while Fred and I, we'd, we were sitting up here smoking hookah and I had told him the story about what occurred yesterday and kind of why I was, I was kind of worked up from, from, from yesterday. And then today, um, what happened today, I was telling him about it. Well, our buddy shows up but I didn't know he was coming by. He never told me he was actually coming by. So when he gets here, he starts pounding on the front door and he had no idea what had occurred. So it was just funny that he did this. And we're sitting upstairs, uh, smoking hookah, uh, listening, listening to the radio. And he starts pounding on the fucking door. I mean, fucking pounding, pow, 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 open the fucking door. And so Fred and I, our adrenaline goes to the fucking roof. We literally both jump out of our chairs. We, come flying down the stairs and we can't, we still can't tell it's him and we run and and I go and open the front door and it's him. And we're both like ready to fucking pounce because somebody's beating on my front door. And, uh, 
for the people that are watching this, uh, Fred is fourth, fourth Lacey. Uh, I see a lot of my, my friends from, uh, growing up skating, things like that. You guys, that's, that's fourth Lacey. Um, I call him Fred. We're 30 over, th we're, we're almost 40 years old. No longer am I calling him by his nickname. He's now Fred to me. Um, anyway, he's got kids of his own. So anyway, he's, he's, he's four or he's Fred now. So anyway, we open the door and it's our buddy standing there and we all just, uh, just fucking were dying laughing and I ended up explaining it to him and he had no idea that this had occurred. And so it was kind of funny. The whole scenario, uh, the whole situation, all of it was, was pretty entertaining. Um, so he ended up hanging out. He hung out up here for about 20 minutes. He's actually a recent business owner. He was a school teacher. Um, he was a school teacher. He was a, he was an elementary school gym teacher for years. I, I want to say he was a, he was a teacher for seven or eight years. And because of all of the bullshit, because of all the nonsense with COVID and masks and vaccinations. Now keep in mind, this guy, he's vaccinated because he was a teacher. So he went and got vaccinated as his uh, wife is a nurse and she got vaccinated and all this stuff. So he did it because his job, you know, and he, but it got to the point with him that, you know, he's a gym teacher and he's being told he has to mask kids and they can't do certain things because they're in the mask. So they can't run around and like they just, so he got fed up with it and he just said, fuck this, I'm quitting. So he quit teaching and he actually, uh, bought a business. He bought a franchise, uh, which was really cool. So he's a recent business owner. His business is doing fantastic. Um, I think last month they, they, I think they had one of their best months ever and that was his first month of ownership. So real kudos to him. Um, I'll eventually have him on here at some point. Um, really good guy, really smart guy. Um, great golfer. So I'll probably bring him on at some point to talk about golf. Uh, might be really boring for a lot of people, but he's a really smart guy. Um, PGA level golfer. Uh, so he's really fun. It's really fun to go with him to play golf. We play golf all the time and it's fun to just watch him because he's that fucking good. Um, and he's nice about everything. He's kind of a golf snob. He makes, he makes fun of, uh, people with certain types of golf clubs. I've got a really nice golf set, so he doesn't say shit to me. Um, but you know, he's, I, I call him a golf snob, but we have a really good time. Um, and it's really enjoyable to watch him play. And then he, you know, he really teaches us. He goes with Fred and I, um, Actually, I was introduced to him through Fred. Um, Fred met, met him on a cruise a couple years ago, and they became good friends um, and then kind of folded everybody into this big group, and we're all, we all just hang out now. I'm actually – he and I are actually going to Denver this weekend. We're going up there to uh, watch the Texas A&M game. We're going to watch uh, Texas A&M play uh, Colorado, the Buffaloes, at Mile High Stadium. Um we're going to, we're going to go, we're going to fly up to Denver this week and go watch that and try to try to hang out with some of our friends that do live in that area. Sarah, I see you're watching. Um, I actually, uh, uh, it was, you know, hope, hopefully I get to see you. I know you're up there. You're going to have family there. Uh, but hopefully I get to at least see you, um, let you know where we're at hanging out. So that'd be really fun. But Anyway, he's become a really good friend, and so really proud of him. He, he took a risk. He put himself out there um, not really knowing if it was going to be successful, and he's, he's already, already took the business to new heights, and um, I think it's really awesome. So anyway, uh, lots of really cool stuff going on, uh, lots of really cool stuff happening, and, you know, just, you know, I'm really grateful um, I thought, like I said, I thought that was really funny. That occurred. Um, all that went down today. So, uh, you know, now we've got another tropical storm out there. Uh, is it tropical storm Linda or something like that? Something happening and things going down. So anyway, we'll see, we'll see how, what the weeks have to bring. Uh, should be pretty entertaining. Lots of stuff happening. So anyway, guys, um, uh, not much else to talk about today. Uh, I, I will say, hey, look, um, hit a couple milestones. Um, really happy about that. Um, hit 400 followers or 400 subscribers on YouTube. Uh, so I really appreciate that. If you guys are seeing this, you know, hey, you know, click the like button, click subscribe. If you watch this and you're watching it on YouTube, there is a notification button. Hit the notifications. You guys get notified whenever I uh, post a new video or go live on there. Obviously, here on uh, Instagram, when I do it on Facebook and Instagram, you guys get notifications on there. So, you know, hey, guys, check it out. Um, I, you know, I, I, there's a lot coming. 
uh, for right now, this is, uh, I guess it's more or less called a vlog cause it's really just me coming on here and, and talking about shit, but there's some really cool stuff I've got coming up. Um, some really cool shows happening. Uh, I'd be adding a lot of content to a lot of different things. So really excited about that. But like I said, uh, hit 400 subscribers today on, on YouTube, uh, past 5,300, uh, followers, uh, and, and page likes on, uh, the Facebook page for the, uh, Jason Husk Manage Chaos. If you guys are watching this, um, on, on YouTube, you know, Hey, you know, check out my, uh, Instagram page, uh, Jason.Husk, check out the Facebook page, um, uh, Jason Husk Manage Chaos. So I really appreciate it, guys. Like I said, lots of, lots of milestones and really just, like I said, from the very beginning, this is, this is this is something I'm doing for fun, but it is an art in in a way. It's it's meant to be entertaining. It's meant to help people. It's meant to put things out there for other people so they they may get something from it. Uh, if it's just one little thing that I say on a daily basis, if you get something from it, hey, um, good. Um, I'm glad, and you know, thank you all so much for constantly reaching out and telling me wonderful things uh, that you like it, you don't like it. Hey, you appreciate this, you appreciate that. Um, you know, I, I, I do appreciate all you guys. I really do. Everybody. I don't care who you are. There's a lot of people, there's people in my life that I really don't like. Um, but at, like I said last night, I do have a love in my heart for everybody. Uh, and you can't, you can't be a sour person. If you really, truly hate somebody, if you have just really any malice in your heart, you can't be a happy person. It's, it's just, it's the exact opposite of what it means to be happy. You can not like somebody and that's fine. But if you have hate for them, then you're really just not a happy person. You can dislike them, and that's okay. You can dislike them for multiple reasons and not be happy with them. With them, But as long as you don't have hate and anger in your heart, you can be a happy person. And, and I truly am. I'm happy, and I do have love in my heart for everybody um, for, for so many different reasons. Um, and I'm grateful for everybody, and I appreciate all the different stuff that people have done for me in my life. Um, and I don't forget the things that people have done to hurt me. I have a photographic memory and I don't forget. I mean, you guys hear me ramble on all the time about dates and locations and situations and things like that. I have a photographic memory and I don't forget shit. So some of you people out there that may be watching this, you may have done certain things to me and you may have forgotten about it. And I may be cordial and polite with you, but I didn't forget. I've just let it go. But I've not forgotten about a fucking thing. So you guys out there, you know, um, there's, there's different aspects of life and for what I appreciate. And there's, there's so many good people in my life, so many wonderful, amazing people in my life that I'm super grateful for. Um, and it really outweighs the negative people. And so I'm happy. I really am happy. And, and I appreciate everybody being so, so great in so many ways. A lot of times you guys give me inspiration, For certain things, um, there's a lot of things I just don't think about to talk about. Um, but people share different scenarios and stories in their own lives and they're dealing with difficulties. And I realize, Hey, I've been through something like that. And here's how I came out. Here's how I, I, I went past it, got past it and I succeeded and I became a better person for it. So, you know, I think about sharing that kind of stuff and I share these scenarios and stuff. Cause like I said, I've lived a huge life and I've been through every version of it you can imagine. I, like I said, I made an obscene amount of money when I was really young and I lost it all and I've been broke and I've had absolutely nothing and no money in the bank account and struggling to pay bills and, you know, pay for things for my kids and buy food, just simple necessities, food and, 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 and water. Um, and then I've, you know, I've worked hard. And I've worked really hard in my life to be where I'm at. And I'm grateful for it. I'm so appreciative of where I'm at. And I'm just not going to let people bring me down. Because there's miserable people out there. And you got to remember that. As an individual, there's always somebody out there. I don't care how well liked you are. There's always going to be somebody out there that wants to see you fail. They're not going to be happy with your success because they're not happy with their own. Maybe they're not where they want to be in life. And that's fine. And that's okay. But what they want to do is try to bring you down because they aren't happy with themselves for whatever reason. And there's always going to be people like that. So, um, you know, you know, just take that with a grain of salt, use it, bring it in, absorb it, and make it better. Just work harder. Work even harder. Because you're not going to make everybody happy. You're never going to make everybody happy. And I've never tried in my life to make everybody happy. 
um, my goal in my life really is, was for me to be happy. And if, because I deal with so many people on a daily basis, if I'm happy, that helps a lot of other people. Uh, that's not a selfish thing. I just know the reality of it. The reality is, is that if, if I'm, if I'm functioning well as a human being, that affects a lot of people. A lot of my employees and things like that, uh, it helps, um, you know, cause then I'm maybe not stressed out and freaking out on them and, you know, yelling for, you know, really, you know, ridiculous reasons. And that happens sometimes, but make yourself happy. Learn to make yourself happy. Learn to love yourself and be happy with who you are. And that shit spreads. It spreads. And people see it and they notice it and they recognize it and it makes them happy because they see happiness. If you're negative and you're spreading negativity, you're going to bring people down. Try to be happy. Try to be loving. Try to show appreciation. And when I say, and I say this all the time, I don't just say, I don't just mean saying thank you. I mean actual Actual ways of showing appreciation, helping people out, giving back, offering kind words, trying to help people through tough times. That's my form of appreciation, giving back in some way. It's not always about donating money to a charity because a lot of times that's disconnected. You could donate money and you don't know where it goes. But physically getting out there and volunteering and helping and doing good things for the community and helping your friends and helping your family in, in, in little little ways – that's true form of showing appreciation because these people, they may have never done anything for you, but we shouldn't put, we shouldn't put the confines on that. We shouldn't go back and, and say, um, I'm only going to help people that have physically helped me help them anyway. Cause you never know how, cause I mean, even, even if you never get something back from them, putting that positivity out there into the universe does come back. I promise you it does come back. Look, I was a really shitty negative person a long time ago and I would put a lot of negative energy out into the universe and negative energy came back. But today I'm happy and I help people and I, and I'm, and I'm polite and I'm cordial and I respectful and that positivity comes back and I promise you it comes back in spades. The same way negativity comes back in spades, positivity comes back in spades. Not just through my family and my friends, but also my business and my life. It, it, it's so wonderful and beautiful. And I strongly suggest everybody to try to really change your mentality and be happy with you and spread that love um, and, that, and, that, and that compassion out to everybody else. So anyway, thank you guys. I appreciate it. I'm going to end it here. Um, like I said, if you guys are watching this on Facebook, YouTube, whatever, Give me a like. Give me a subscribe over on YouTube. I really appreciate it, guys. It allows me to get more positivity out there. If you guys like what I was doing over here on the, the Instagram, like I said, I'm doing the Instagram live at the same time because the, the platforms really don't cross. Um, you, you, the content, posting content from like YouTube over to fa or Instagram is a little different. You can post it over to Facebook, but it doesn't really translate to, to YouTube. I'm, uh, you know, uh, if you guys notice on, on the YouTube, I'm doing it you know, regular kind of landscape mode on Facebook or Instagram here. I'm kind of doing it, uh, regular. I'm doing actually doing it through a phone. So, you know, just trying different things and really just trying to have fun and enjoy myself. So guys, I want to say thank y'all so much. Thank everybody who watched this. Thank everybody who, who has cheered me on and gave me positivity and gave me love and, and, and respect. Um, thank y'all so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate all you guys. Um, so very much. Uh, and I hope that I can bring more content to you guys and things that you guys can relate to and funny stories and little things here and there. Um, cause that's actually what I enjoy. I do. I do enjoy telling funny stories, funny stories about my childhood, things I did when I was growing up. I really can't wait to get Fred in here and talk about stuff. Me talking about some of the stuff I did skating, um, some of the antics we were up to, it makes, it has much more effect when somebody who was there with me, um, can share in it. So I'll bring, I'll be bringing people like that on. Um, and that's kind of the cool part. I'm, I'm friends with a lot of world-class athletes, a lot of Olympic athletes and business owners and people like that. And it's really fun because these people came from all different walks of life. And so it's really entertaining. So I really can't wait to bring more content to you guys. And I hope you really enjoy it. I hope what you do, you enjoy what I'm doing here. And if you do like what I'm doing here, give me a like, give me a subscribe over on YouTube, go follow me on YouTube, hit the notification button. So you guys get notified when I go live uh, you know, go over to the uh, Facebook page, Jason Husk, Managed Chaos. 
you know, give me a like, a follow over there because I'm going to do stuff on different platforms. Like I said, I did a live last night on the Facebook page and then I posted it over to the uh, YouTube channel. So uh, I'm not sure if one will cannibalize the other. I don't know. Um, but I'm just trying different stuff and it's fun. So thank you guys. I appreciate it. And, and that's all I got. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And y'all have an amazing, awesome, wonderful rest of your day. And if you guys are waking up on the other side of the world, cause I do have a lot of followers, um, on, uh, from, from, from Asia and Europe. Uh, if you guys are just going to bed or just waking up, Hey, I hope you guys have an, I hope, I hope you, you have an amazing sleep. And I hope if you're just starting your day over in, in Asia, I hope you guys have an amazing day. I really do. I love all you guys. Thank you so much. And I'll talk to you guys very soon.